Paul Crikey, there's so much one could say about Meadows. Um, I mean, so they, they are or can be very biodiverse places. They're, you know, lowland hay meadows, upland hay meadows, chalk downland, they're all sort of famous for their flowers and, and butterflies and bees and so on. Um, uh, and they are a habitat that we've completely messed up. You know, most of them are gone. We used to have, um, if I remember the figures, seven million hectares of these kind of flower-rich grasslands um, in the 1920s, 1930s. Um, and we've destroyed about 98% of them uh, in the last um, 100 years, which is, you know, basically virtually all. There's a few little fragments left and they're amazing places and we need to hang on to them. Um, but there's now, there's quite a lot of interest in recreating them. Um, and uh, there's been a lot of research done on how to do that. And it, it, it can be done. Um, it's quite challenging, and particularly if the soil is too fertile from having lots of fertilizers put on it. Um, these flower-rich grasslands naturally have very low soil fertility, which actually kind of counterintuitively helps the, the floral diversity because it prevents a few dominant species from outcompeting everything else. Um, and, and in fact, the, re the way we destroyed most of these beautiful hay meadows was by putting fertilizer on them. You just, you just, uh, it's all it takes. Um, you know, you can have a beautiful meadow full of flowers, put a sack of artificial nitrates on it, and the next year you'll have a field full of nettles and docks, more or less, is pretty much how it goes. Um, uh, so anyway, um, there are, uh, it is possible to restore them. Uh, and there are lots of different seed mixes available and um, uh, some are, some better than others. Um, uh, so so when, you say, my, when you say better, if you don't mind me interrupting, when you say better, is that in terms of um, better in the sense that perhaps some of the flower shapes are more have, have evolved for sort of the mouth parts of some of the insects? I mean, how... Well, so I guess it depends to some extent what you want. Um, you know, if you just want something to be pretty um, for a long time, and then you might sow different species to if you want something that supports biodiversity, um, particularly native biodiversity. Um, so I would say that if you're, if you're sowing a meadow in the countryside in the UK, be it in a field or a road verge or a roundabout or whatever then really we should be trying to restore something that's similar as, as similar as possible to the beautiful natural hay meadows or semi-natural hay meadows that that we lost so much of so it should be a native seed mix um, full of whatever's appropriate for the soil but in in chalky areas it might be chalk down and plants or it might be lowland hay meadow plants or whatever um, that seems most appropriate to me and will support the most other life, all the, all the, the herbivores of, and, and uh, parasitoids and so on that I was just talking about. Mm. Um, and lots of pollinators that, that are adapted to feeding on these plants. Um, it gets a bit less clear what the, what the right thing to do is if you're talking about gardens or urban areas or university campuses. So. Um, on the University of Sussex campus where I work or did work until recently and uh, still theoretically or remotely work um, uh, there are there are some patches of flowers uh, mainly annual flowers that are sown every year and there's a sign in front of them that says wildflowers um, but if you look at them um, most of them are not native plants. It's a seed mix. It's a, it's a sort of, a, they're sometimes called pictorial meadows. Yeah. It's a pretty seed mix of annual plants from all over the world. Lots of North American plants, things like cosmos and phacelia and all sorts of things mixed up. Um, and it does look pretty and it does attract some pollinators. Um, uh, but it, it, to my mind, if you're going to call something wildflowers, that kind of implies native to me. I, th I think most people, non-biologists looking at that, think, oh, that's a beautiful native wildflower mix. And they don't realize that actually it's far from it. Um, and although it does feed some pollinators, it doesn't support the, the, the rich diversity of, of, of life that would be associated with a, 
uh, uh, one of our uh, uh, flowerage grasslands, our hay meadows or whatever, because they're not native plants, so the, so the, the herbivores associated with them aren't here. Um, most of our native insects can't, can't feed on the foliage. They may, the pollinators may visit the flowers. Pollinators tend to be quite adaptable, but herbivores not so much. So, I, you know, if you just want a pretty patch of flowers in your garden, you know, I, I, I think it was a bit daft to tell people they should only grow native plants in their garden because, well, it's never going to happen even if I did start saying that. You know, people are very attached to all the, including me, to be fair, you know, my garden's not full of native wildflowers. It's got lots, but it's also got non-natives, yeah. as does every garden, more or less. Um, so, so, you know, if you want a patch of assorted from all over the world, pretty annual flowers, in your garden, fine, but just don't call it a wildflower meadow and pretend you've recreated a hay meadow because you haven't. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's kind of horses for courses. It depends what you want. <laughs>